In this video, we're going to learn about the solid principles by applying them to this model behavior, so you can learn each one by example. My name is Charles, and this is Infallible Code, a channel designed to help you become a better game developer. If you want to learn more about programming, Unity, and game development, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified every time a new tutorial is made available. So before we dive into the code, why don't we take a quick look at the example project. The scene consists of a simple environment that I created using some free assets that I found on the asset store, as well as the first person shooter character controller that comes with the Unity standard assets package. Now, if you mouse over any one of these dark gray objects, we can see that they are outlined with a thick green outline. This is the code that we will be refactoring today, and it's all controlled by something called the Selection Manager. Why don't we switch on over to the code editor and look at that now. This is the Selection Manager, the class that we will be refactoring over the course of this video. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn the solid principles by seeing them applied to this class. Now, I'm going to keep you on your toes this time around, and I'm going to be covering the solid principles out of order but we're still gonna start with the single responsibility principle. And to do that, why don't we go ahead and talk about what Selection Manager is currently responsible for. So looking at the logic, I can see that one, it's responsible for ray creation, and two, it's also responsible for selection determination. Now at a high level, the Selection Manager should only be responsible for delegating the tasks that are required for selection management. But we can see that it's kind of getting a little too low level with its logic. And we're going to need to take that logic and move it out into its own classes and then eventually extract interfaces from those classes. So why don't we go ahead and start with the easier of the two, and that would be the ray creation. So what I'm going to do is select this code and extract it into its own method. I'm going to call this create ray and we're going to make it public and we don't want it to be static. All right. Now we have this logic safely extracted into a method. We can go ahead and create a new class that doesn't yet exist. I'm going to call it mouse screen ray provider and we're going to call it ray provider and I'll let writer go ahead and create that type for me. Make it public and Let's make it derive from model behavior. Now we can select the create ray method and use the move instance method refactoring to move this method over to the mouse screen ray provider class. Perfect. So now we've moved that responsibility out of the selection manager, which is great. However, the selection manager still isn't adhering to the dependency inversion principle because it depends on a concrete implementation, the mouse screen ray provider implementation to be exact. What it really needs to do is depend on an interface. So let's go back down to the mouse screen ray provider and we're going to just extract an interface. Let's call it I ray provider. And we'll make sure that it includes the create ray method. Great. Now we can go back up to the selection manager, select the mouse screen ray provider, and apply the use base type where possible refactoring to ensure that now we're depending on an interface instead of a concrete implementation. So now this particular piece of logic adheres to the dependency inversion principle. It depends on our interface instead of a concrete implementation. All right, that was easy enough, but the selection determination logic is going to be a little more complicated. Why don't we go ahead and talk about the logic we currently have? As you can see, it uses this compare tag, which isn't really ideal, and it's not doing any sort of caching. So this is pretty unoptimized. Now, if we wanted to change this, we'd have to come in here and actually modify this code, and that would break the open close principle which states that a class should be open for extension and closed to modification. So in order to extend this logic, instead of updating the code here, we need to pull it out into its own class and we should be creating new classes to implement new logic instead. Now I mentioned a caching and that's a little bit more sophisticated. So instead of moving this logic into a single method, we're going to break it up into two methods, one that just checks the current selection and another that returns the selection. Because when you're talking about caching, you're talking about an implementation that needs to hold an internal state. So our new implementation is going to have to be a little more sophisticated, which means that we're going to have to first represent that internal state within selection manager before we move it out into its new implementation, its new class file. 
Now, it's going to look a little weird at first, but a lot of the things we're about to do are a part of the iterative approach that I like to take to refactoring. And you'll see that it's all going to make sense at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do to make way for my changes is I'm just going to rename this selection field to current selection. I like current selection better for this variable just because it, it makes sense. You're talking about a selection manager and, and managing the selection. It's dealing with the current selection. When it calls on select and on deselect, it's passing in the current selection. Now we're going to add a new field and I'm going to call this one selection. And this selection is going to be a part of the internal state of the new implementation, the new class that we're going to create. So now we're going to need to use this in the selection determination logic. So instead of updating the current selection, which is a part of the selection manager, we're going to update the selection field. And then since now we're no longer updating current selection, we're going to have to add some logic to do that here. Perfect. So now the selection determination logic is completely isolated and we can now move it into its own method. We'll call this method check. It's going to take an array, return void, and I'm going to make it public because we're, we're going to need to move it soon enough. All right. And I'm also going to encapsulate this reference to the selection member variable to its own method as well. We'll call this get selection. And I'm going to make this public as well. Perfect. Now, just like before, we can go ahead and add another class that doesn't exist. I'm going to call this ray cast based tag selector. I know it's a pretty crummy name, but we'll genericize it shortly. I'm going to call it selector and let's go ahead and allow writer to create this type for us. Again, we're going to make it public and we're going to have it derived from mono behavior. And then we're going to need to add all of the fields that make up this new class's internal state, which would include the selectable tag serialized field and this selection transform. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to make them public for now. so that we can go ahead and reference them inside of the selection manager class. So let's start with selection. I'm going to call selector dot selection. And then selector dot selectable tag. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and use the move instance method refactoring to move these into the Raycast based tag selector class. Perfect. So as we can see, all of this logic now lives in a new class called Raycast based tag selector. But again, we're not fully solid yet. We still need to extract an interface. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to select the Raycast based tag selector and go ahead and extract an interface. Let's go ahead and call this iSelector and make sure that we are including check and get selection. And then we can apply the refactoring use base type where possible. So before we do some cleanup here, let's talk about the Liskov substitution principle. The reason I wrote iSelector in the way that I did is because I want to be able to replace it with any subtype. Currently, we're using the Raycast based tag selector, but I want to be able to implement iSelector with any logic I want and have the selection manager still function correctly. And that's what the Liskov substitution principle is all about. As long as I'm calling these two methods on iSelector in this way, then the functionality of the selection manager should not break at all. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to remove these comments, tighten up this code, and let's go ahead and move all of these classes into their own files. And then lastly, we just got to make sure that we're using the awake method to populate these. 
beautiful. Look at that class. That is one solid mono behavior. It adheres to all of the solid principles, including the last one we haven't spoken about yet, which is the interface segregation principle. Before, this selection manager was responsible for a bunch of different things, but now we've taken those responsibilities and divided them into small subsets of functionality. Each responsibility now lives in its own interface and can be replaced as we need. So with this in place, why don't we switch back to Unity, set up the scene, and test this out. So the first thing we need to do is select the selection manager and add our new components. So we've got the Raycast base tag selector, and we also have the mouse screen ray provider. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and run the scene. All right, so let's mouse over some objects. All right, beautiful. We didn't break a thing. And that's all there is to it. That wasn't so bad, right? And now we have some functionality that can scale with our project no matter how many times the requirements change. And they will change. In the next video, we're going to add some new behavior to the Selection Manager by implementing some of the interfaces that we created today. You won't want to miss it. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in that next video. Thank you to all of my patrons, and a special shout out to Dark Rush Photography, Justin Hurst, NZ, Richard Stance, Sean Carey, Thomas, Wayne Glows, and Yakov.